Breezy is going to hit record. Thank you. And I just wanted to start by recognizing those of you who are in Success Club already. So you saw the post this morning. And <clears throat> first of all, we have, I, I don't know this person, but Jamie, if you're on the call, way to go. <clears throat> you are already in Success Club. And then we've got the others. Try and pull it up here right at the same time, guys. Um, I know that Nicole is at SC4, and then a few of you are already on the board. So way to go on that. Uh, next thing I wanted to talk about real quick is some upcoming things. Don't forget that the challenge packs this month are in Sunday Max 30 at 140, which is an awesome deal. And then the size challenge pack as well at 140. And then kickstarts of those, which include the three-day refresh, are both at 180. If you do hit Success Club this month, remember that you qualify for the PB webcast with Brian Tracy, which is amazing. He's one of the big time uh, personal development uh, people. So lots of books from him, but uh, he'll be on a webcast that you'll be a part of if you hit Success Club. And then uh, there will be the three-day refresh coming on sale on the 16th. So be thinking about sharing that with your clients and sharing that on social media. Uh, if you haven't gotten results from that, I recommend that you order it and do it and get results so you could share it with uh, people on social media, share it with people in messaging um, to help uh, promote that um, without being salesy because you're using it and are proof of the product. Okay, and the last thing I think, I think that was it. So I just wanna introduce Breezy now and if you don't know Breezy, she is the, um, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but she created the tribe. And so she has been coaching for two and a half years and she's a former elementary school teacher turned beach body coach. And she became diamond in just under 50 days in building this business and went five-star elite in 18 months as a coach. And she is now a two-time elite coach and which means you are a part of an elite team and she has hit or she's been success club all-star legend and she is now a six-figure income earner uh, who has retired her husband Matt this year so they live in Idaho they have two children with a wee baby girl on the way so that's so exciting but I'll turn the time over to Breezy now Thank you, Brittany. It's funny because today Brittany's like, do you want me to introduce you on the call? Because she's our diamond of the month kind of doing the tribe stuff, helping out in there. And I was like, that's kind of weird. I haven't been introduced. Like I do calls for other teams and I get introduced, but I haven't really been introduced on my own team call in a long time. So that kind of felt good to get introduced because I know there's a lot of new coaches, a lot of new faces, people that I don't even know personally. And so um, I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm excited that you showed up to learn something tonight. Um, thank you, Brittany, for the announcements and for introing me. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful for leaders like Brittany on our team. Um, you guys might not realize it, but when you see coaches, you know, posting um, and sharing different things in the tribe page, um, a lot of those coaches are, you know, leaders who are just stepping up and being leaders in the team page. And um, some of them are diamonds who have a, just certain assignments for the month that they're helping with. But a lot of them are coaches just like you who see something cool or see, want to add value to the team. So um, even if you're a brand new coach, never hesitate to share and add value and just step up and be a leader in the tribe because there's always room for more leaders and um, people to build. Um, we're all about building each other, rising and inspiring together um, on our tribes. So anyway, um, thank you. Um, all right, tonight, let me go ahead and get my screen share up here. I am going to admit to you guys, I was really, I didn't know what I was going to talk about tonight. Um, I wasn't sure how, you know, I just, I wasn't sure. I didn't know what I wanted to talk to about, talk to you guys about tonight, um, until yesterday. And yesterday I was feeling, I was talking to Ashley and um, I, I was saying, you know, I'm feeling really down about like my recruiting, about how things are going with my team. Like I feel like I'm failing. And so what I did was I jumped in to some personal development um, specific to what I needed. It was a low month for myself in recruiting and for our whole team, the entire tribe. It was a very low month for recruiting. And so I jumped in and I started listening to all these webinars about recruiting and 
it just kind of, um, hold on, let me fix my screen here so I can see, so I don't lose my train of thought. Um, it just kind of got me thinking like that maybe this is what I should talk to, talk to you guys about because I'm having so many aha moments. I want to share that with you guys and maybe that will help everyone. If everyone's struggling with this, maybe we can kind of work together um, and we can find something um, that's going to work. So um, I haven't always been a low recruiter. I've kind of been a consistent recruiter. Some months I recruit you know, high numbers, um, you know, numbers that could make me, um, you know, a top, a top 10 coach in some months, most months, I'm just an average coach, but it's that consistency that's paid off. So as I've been thinking about this, um, I have been a consistent recruiter. And so that's kind of what I want to share with you guys is how you can grow your team consistently. So, um, Something that I want to share is this quote before I get into the three sections I want to talk about by Jim Ronitz. He says, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. Don't wish for, for less challenge, wish for more wisdom. And so yesterday and the day before, as I was kind of lamenting to Ashley and to my coach, Brigida, um, about, you know, my struggles um, this quote came to mind and I was like, Breezy, you just need to be a student. You need to go study. You need to go, um, get more wisdom. You need to work a little harder. That's what you need to do. Don't just give up, um, when times get tough in coaching. So, um, that's just like a little life lesson in coaching. You know, if you feel like you're not adding coaches to your team, if you're not adding challengers to your team, if you're failing in your invites, whatever it is, don't wish that it was easier. Just get better. Um, go be a student. That's going to serve you well as a coach. That will serve you very well. Um, I love Jim Rohn. He always talks about, you know, being a student and learning, being a lifelong learner and, um, you know, acquiring the skills that are going to help you become a better and stronger coach. And I'll tell you guys, I'm two, two and a half, almost three years in to this business and I learn something new every day. I fail at something every day. And it's not, um, it's not that I'm crazy awesome at everything. That's not why I'm successful. It's because I'm willing to fail a lot. And I'm willing to be a lifelong learner and a student and grow in those ways um, and seek for opportunities. So that's kind of what this call is kind of all centered on is I want to help you guys learn and grow um, and become better coaches through the recruiting process. So um, we are going to talk about the recruiting process, and I'm going to kind of go over three things. The first thing I just want to touch on is the R word. I say recruiting, and I see people squirm in, you know, like, oh, recruiting. So I'm going to kind of address the R word. Um, I know that's kind of taboo for a lot of people. Um, then I'm going to talk about the numbers. That's another one that people just squirm when they talk about numbers. For me, numbers, I get passionate about them. I get excited about them. It lights a fire. So kind of two different sides there. I'm just going to touch on it. Then I'm really going to dive into some action steps on how you guys can consistently grow your teams. Um, I don't know. I, I don't even know what the tribe team page is at now. I don't know how many people are in there, but you guys got to realize that team page, it started with me. And so it started like, well, actually I probably, I probably started it when I had a few discount coaches. So like my mom, Ashley was probably one of them at the very beginning. Um, and you know, just a few people. So it's like, it started with just us. Like we, it was just tiny. Um, and now it's this amazing team and we have, you know, over 20 people on this call tonight, which is amazing who are showing up learning. So, um, it's, it's consistency that's going to grow your team. And we're going to talk about those action steps that you need to do consistently in order to see that growth. All right. The R word. All right. This one, um, I had to address it because, I know that recruiting for a lot of people is the number one reason why they don't want to be a coach. They don't want to get into an MLM because of recruiting. They don't want to have to talk to people. Um, they don't want to be salesy. They think of recruiting as all these words in the gray here. Um, it's scary. It's hard. It's salesy. It's icky, uncomfortable. It's just not me, not something I would do. Um, or it's something just the top coaches do. Um, when you get into the business, maybe you think, you know, that's just something that they do. Um, and that's not me. So if you're thinking, obviously, if you're, this is your mindset about recruiting, we kind of need to work with you to make a shift. If you want to be here and be a coach and grow a team, um, then this mind shift, shift needs to happen. And hopefully some of these tips will kind of help you with that shift. So I was listening to a call, and um, it's a great call if you want to look it up on YouTube. It's called um, 
recruiting, oh my gosh, what's it called? Something like recruiting university or something like that, but it's with Raina Odell and Bonnie Engel. And all I did, guys, I went on, I, I looked up the top recruiters in the coach online office. You can go and look at the top recruiters. And I saw who they were. I went to YouTube. I typed in their names plus the word recruiting and found their videos on recruiting. So if you go, you look up Amy Silverman, Raina Odell, Bonnie Engel um, on YouTube plus recruiting, you're going to find all these videos with great tips. So something that Raina Odell said in this webinar I watched that really stuck out to me, she said, that recruiting is simply, so simply, sharing what you're passionate about. Oh my heck, like, I just like, I about died. I was like, that is so simple, and that's exactly what it is. Sharing what you're passionate about. What are we passionate about? We're passionate about Beachbody, you guys. It changed our lives. That's what we do when we recruit. We share what we're passionate about. Turbo Fire changed my life. It helped me lose the baby weight. Um, Shakeology changed my life. It's helped me take control of my Crohn's and feel better than I ever have managing my Crohn's disease. Holy cow, I want to share that with people. I'm passionate about that. That's what recruiting is. Um, and then Bonnie Engel, she said also that recruiting is helping people solve their problems. Um, where were you? We'll talk about this a little bit later, but where were you at when you first found Beachbody? What kind of problems did you have in your life? What answers did that solve for you? Were you depressed? Did you have major anxiety? Were you struggling as a mom? Were you struggling as a husband? Were you, what, what was the deal? What did Beachbody do for you? Were you struggling financially? Um, uh, are you comfortable in your finances now because of your coaching career? Um, what, what problems can Beachbody solve for these people that you're sharing it with? That's what recruiting is. Um, and then, like I said, it's sharing your love for Beachbody. So that's what it is. Um, Bonnie Engel said when she signed up as a coach, she was normal, like a lot of us, that recruiting absolutely scared her. It made her feel gross and icky. She didn't want to be a salesman. But then she thought about um, how it feels when somebody reaches out to you and wants you for something. So she shares how she, she shared how she was like a pharmacy rep and she had like a profile on LinkedIn um, and people would contact her if she looked like a good fit um, for them. Like, so they wanted to hire her. And she said, I just, re it made me think about when I got those messages from people saying, well, you would be great for this job. It made me feel so good about myself. And she said, we get to do that as coaches. We get to reach out to people and say, I think you would be an amazing coach. I think it would be a blast to have you on my team. Um, I see these amazing qualities in you. And so we get to share that with people through our invites, through our posting, through our coach op groups, which I'm going to talk about. But that's what kind of, you know, recruiting is. It's not icky, guys. We need to change our mindset um, to something happy, something bright. It's giving people an opportunity. It's sharing your passion. It's, um, it's sharing this light that, you, that Beachbody has given you. It's sharing that light with other people. That's what recruiting is. All right. Next one, the numbers. Okay. So I have some coaches on my team that I love dearly, but numbers, you talk numbers with them and they want to run the other way. Um, it just, it scares them. They don't like to talk money numbers. They don't like to talk recruiting numbers, but you guys, this is the facts. And so you guys have to realize when you get in this business, if you want to build a business, there are numbers involved. Um, if you listen to Jim Rohn or any great network marketers um, that put out PD, they will tell you statistics of how many people you talk to, how many will actually sign up. Um, and this is kind of the same concept. And um, I figured this out in the wall. It's called the wall. It's a group that um, five star elite coaches and above are in. They have these conversations about the numbers all the time, and I've taken note, and I've noticed what they talk about, and these are some of the numbers of the network averages that they talk about. So um, the reason I'm sharing this is because uh, the past couple days when I was thinking about my failures, my goals, I was thinking about how my goal is to be a 15-star elite coach. I want to be a superstar coach and have you guys be this superstar diamond team. I want, I want this team, this tribe, to be known as a superstar diamond team, but I'm, I've been failing at that. And so I'm, I went to the numbers and I said, okay, what do these numbers need to look like? Um, and then I listened to a call, Raina Odell. She said, 
She said, you need to get a goal in your mind. So if you want to be an elite coach, if you want to be a premier coach, if you want to be a superstar diamond coach, if you want to be a diamond coach, whatever it is, get that goal, see how many people it's going to take. And then you work backwards from that. You have to know the numbers in order to reach these goals. So um, just network averages I put up here, one out of 10 coaches become diamond coaches. So you might recruit 10 coaches, and of those, one of them will become diamond. Um, top 10 coaches, they're recruiting, so people like Raina Odell and Bonnie Engel, Amy Silverman, Melanie Mitchell, they're recruiting between 20 and 40 coaches a month. Um, and that's just kind of that's just kind of the ballpark there for them. And five-star elite coaches, they have an average of 50 active coaches. Sometimes it's a lot, uh, not a lot more, but 20 more, maybe a few less. But really, the average is about 50 active coaches um, on their team. And then 15-star elite coaches have an average of 150 active coaches on their team. Now, that might sound like a lot to you guys. But with the steps I'm going to share with you about being consistent in growing your team, this is attainable. And that's the beauty of this business. If you can dial in and learn how to be consistent in growing your team, this is attainable for you. Um, if you set yourself up for success every month, um, then if you're, you know, if you're upping your numbers, you're talking to more people, you're, um, you know, investing in growing your network by running free groups, by asking for referral, referrals, if you're growing your like page, your Instagram, this can happen for you. If you be consistent, these numbers are absolutely a reality for any single one of you on this call. And I put this picture here. This is Melanie Metro and her team at a workout. I think it was in Cancun maybe. Um, but it's just like, this is what I want. Like I want a group of like-minded women um, rocking it with me. You know, like that's my, that's my view of Superstar Diamond. That's what the numbers reflect for me. It re it's reflected in these people. I might sign up 10 coaches, but I'm signing up those 10 coaches so I can find the one that's going to be with me in Cancun. Um, and I'm going to sign up 100 coaches because I want 10 of you at Cancun with me, you know? So it's like, I just, I want this, this camaraderie, me, this group of people, this group of women who are building amazing businesses and passionate and love life and um, want to do this thing called Beachbody right alongside me. And that's what the numbers reflect for me. That's my goal. And if you're passionate like that and have that same goal, it's possible for you. Okay, action steps. This is the nitty gritty. This is what you all came here for. This is the, how the heck do I do it, Breezy? All right, so first, I'm going to talk about identifying your niche and then making a monthly plan. And I actually have Ashley on the call and she's going to kind of step in and talk a little bit um, about some, a couple things she does. And then um, step three is going to, I'm going to talk about be positive, be passionate and be consistent. Kind of three things there, but they all coincide. So I'm going to jump right in to identifying your niche. So um, this I pulled directly from what bon or Melanie Mitro said at the new leader conference this year. You guys, this is from the number one coach in the network. This is what she does. This is what she has her team do to identify their niche. Your niche is finding your ideal coach, who you're talking to when you're posting on social media. If you've been in a diamond training, we've talked about your avatar, creating your avatar. Um, this is the same type of exercise. This is crucial for you because you don't want to get on social media and just talk to everyone. We're not trying to find warm bodies. You don't want to find warm bodies to fill those numbers. You want to find people that connect with you and are like you. Um, that's who you want on your team, not warm bodies. Um, okay, so answer these questions. This is an exercise I encourage you to do after this call if you haven't done it. So who is your target audience or customer? What do they look like? Um, this, maybe write yourself out in hashtags. Are you a boy mom? Are you a runner? Are you, do you like to sew? Do you, um, are you really involved in your church? What is it about you that, um, that is gonna project your audience and attract the audience back to you? Who's your audience? Who are you speaking to? Um, how will you be introduced or approach these people? So are you, are you a fitness instructor? Are you, 
um, super outgoing and you like to go to parties and go to the park with your friends? Are you super introverted and most of your communication is done through social media? How are you going to connect with these people? And however that is, how you need to figure out your approach then. So if you're wondering how to approach people through social media, go watch some webinars on inviting. Ashley did a great one on conversations um, the last a couple weeks ago. So figure out who these people are, where you're going to meet them. Maybe if it's social media, there's certain groups on social media you're going to find them in. There's certain hashtags on Instagram you'll find them through. And there's a certain target market on your like page that you're going to find them through. Figure out what that is. Um, three, what are the biggest burdens and the problems that they face? So again, I kind of talked about this earlier. What were you struggling with when you came across Beachbody? For me, we didn't have the money to buy a challenge pack. I run into that all the time with moms that didn't, don't have the money to buy a challenge pack. I get it. I put it on the credit card. I understand. Um, you know, there's, so think about the burdens and the problems that they face, and that's going to help you in your posting speak to them. Um, and kind of, I'll we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you know, you're going to essentially helps them solve their problems. Are they struggling with depression, their weight, um, their, you know, just life? Like, what are they struggling with? Their job, they don't want to work anymore. How are you going to help them um, solve their problems? So that kind of goes into number four there. I answered that. So how do you intend to affect these? How can you solve their problem? And obviously that's going to be through sharing your story, um, sharing um, answers to those objections or those concerns, those problems through your posts, through private messages, and in obviously your challenge groups are a solution to that. So um, what makes your offer better than your competitors? Now, this one, you guys might be saying like, I'm not you, Breezy. I can't do that. Um, I'm not Melanie Mitro. I'm not Ashley. I'm not Brittany. That's great. I don't want you to be any one of us because you are you for a reason. Um, and what makes you better than me is these questions before. Who are you? Who are you identifying with? Maybe the, our niche market is really similar, but that doesn't matter because I know for a fact that you don't have certain traits that I have and I don't have certain traits that you have. And you're going to connect with certain people that I'm not going to connect with. Um, take me and Ashley. Our personalities are so, so different. She, um, we have a ton in common, and that's why we connected. But as far as personalities go, she is super organized, and I am a hot mess. I, like, can't, like, you're lucky I'm on this call, and I remembered, and I'm showered, and I'm clean, and I'm decent. Like, that's just, like, the difference between us. Like, she is just... And so some people are going to be super attracted to Ashley because she can say, I'm going to sign you up and I'm going to line you out. And this is, I'm going to help you every step of the way. And people might be attracted to me because I'm going to say, I will give you the tools, sign up with me. I can give you the tools and the resources, but I'm going to help, I'm going to help you by help, by having you figure this out on your own and go through this at your own pace. So we are completely different that way. And Melanie Mitchell actually says that exact thing about the two different personalities in her Nash, in her leader conference thing about um, how we attract people that way. So what makes your offer better, better than your competitors? Well, number one, because it's you. It's you. And you have to add value to yourself. Um, and that comes from personal development. You have to think that you're great. You have to act like a leader. You have to show up. and um, feel great about yourself. And um, if you guys saw me, if you were on the diamond dash call before this, um, I had like at the very beginning, like my hair was pulled up. I had just woke up from a nap because I had a migraine all day today. And I just, I looked, I was a hot mess. I was horrible. And I got ready for this call because I knew I wanted to feel confident in front of you guys. I wanted you guys to see me as a leader and um, I wanted to perform well for you guys tonight on this call. And so that's sometimes what you need to do is you need to boost your confidence and boost yourself um, for so that you, you can present yourself the way that you want to present yourself to your niche, um, these people that you're talking to. Okay, next one. Oh, hold on. I, speak to your niche only. I just want to put that in there. Don't feel like you are, you have to talk to everyone. 
this is a big mistake a lot of new coaches make is they say they try to attract everyone because they just want a warm body. They just want to get all the coaches that they can, all the people they can to fill their challenge group. And so they throw it out there for everyone, like this generic thing. Don't do that. Um, zero in on your target market, your niche market, and speak to those people in everything that you post and everything that you do. You're not narrowing things down. It's a good thing, I promise you. Okay, make a monthly plan. So there's a lot of stuff on this slide. I'm gonna kind of just, um, this is something that I encourage you guys to dive into more. Um, there's a great 30 minute or maybe it's 20 minute call by Melanie Mitro and she talks about this on YouTube, but I'm just going to kind of share some of the things that it's important for you to schedule every month and follow through with. And that's kind of the key is to follow through with it. Um, what this planning is going to do for growing your team is it's going to show people that you're showing up as a leader. And it's going to let your followers know what to expect from you. Um, I know I asked this question earlier in our diamond page, you know, kind of what best practices of the top recruiters do. And Brittany, um, she's a top recruiter on our team. And she said that she does, you know, like her coach opportunity call the same time every month. She's done that every year or all year this year. And that's a great practice to get into um, doing these things consistently at the same time because then people know what to expect. They see you showing up, and that automatically raises your level, level of credibility. Um, you might not be a top coach. You might be an Emerald coach, but if you show up and you're consistent and you're talking to enough people, then that's going to pay off for you. Okay, so a few things to schedule that are important to schedule. Um, your free groups. Make sure that you're running a free group. If, you're, if that's how you're using um, if that's how you're networking with people, which I highly recommend, it's been super beneficial for almost every single person on our team. So make sure to schedule your free groups. Schedule when you're going to run your challenge group. Here's the recruiting key right here. Schedule a coach sneak peek and a coach op call. If you are a new coach, if you are a fresh brand new baby coach, and that terrifies the heck out of you, reach out to your upline coach, team up with them for a month and then spread your wings and fly and do your own the next month. Um, it's uncomfortable. It's scary, but you have to be a leader. I remember when I ran my first coach basics group for my, for my team, it was like, I had like mostly discount coaches in there, like two building coaches. Like it was kind of like, it was scary. It was vulnerable. I remember doing my first team call. That was terrifying. Like, but you just, you have to do these things to grow. And you know, I, you fell forward. That's what you do. You fell forward. You just try it and you do it. And yeah. So, um, okay. So the other part of that, um, you know, all these things you schedule out. Um, but something that Melanie Mitchell does is she comes up for a theme for the month for her recruiting. So she plans out, you know, so if it's like busy moms build a business, she takes two weeks of her month. The end of the month is when she does it. And that's when she talks about recruiting. Um, she does, she, every single, every single day she posts something, um, referring to this busy mom builds a business theme, um, and as a call to action post for coaching for her coach think Pete group, that's going to be following those two weeks of posting. So that's not the exact way to do it. Bonnie Ingle, what she does is she posts every single post that she, not every single, well, she says every single post, but um, every day, daily, she's talking about coaching in lifestyle posts that she posts on her page. She's constantly sharing the business opportunity through her page, and she's attracting people to her that way. She also does do coach sneak peeks. So um, those are kind of some things to schedule, things to think about. Make sure you're talking about it in your posts. And um, a couple other ideas is go live on Facebook talk about it. There's a lot of coaches that have been doing that lately. And I think it's amazing because what that does is that shows people that you're confident and you're excited, you're passionate about it. Um, and it just, it's really raw and really real. And people like that. People are attracted to that. So, um, going live on Facebook, even if it's about your, um, like your transformation, go live on Facebook about your transformation. Um, and yeah, so schedule out some times to go live. 
maybe um, you'll do it every Monday. Um, videos. Videos are another thing that Melanie does that ties into her as far as um, what she's doing for the month, her theme for the, you know, Coach Sneak Peek, maybe a preview of the Coach Sneak Peek, um, things like that. So just the whole thing, Ashley just did a great call in our Diamond Dash about organization and how she sets up her schedule. Um, she has, you know, different ways that she schedules her month. Um, if you guys are your PS coach, if you're in my PS coach page or Ashley's or even in our tribe page, we have a calendar and I just strongly suggest that you guys get a calendar, um, you know, plan out your months and know what you're going to do because that's going to make it a lot easier for you to grow your teams because you're going to have a plan of action on how you're finding these people. Um, and then obviously you're going to be doing, you're going to be inviting them and talking to them daily um, as you do these things. Okay. So po some post ideas. This is another thing that you can do. I encourage you to do after this call is to get out a notebook and these are, these are going to give you some ideas of what to post every single month that are, it's going to attract people to you. It's going to help you talk about coaching. So make a list of what attracted you to Beachbody. Those are all ideas for posts right there. You guys, what attracted you to Beachbody? You can make a post out of that. A call to action post. Um, what Beachbody has done for you. List of objections that people have given you. If someone gives you an objection about cost, make it into a post. Brittany is great at doing this. Um, if someone gives you an obje objection about, um, you know, soy and Shakeology or something, make a post about it. And, you know, obviously you don't call that person out. You just make a post about, um, you know, debunking it and talking about why you love it and why it's great. Um, okay. And then list the reasons why you're a coach. What are your dreams and your passions? What's coaching doing for you? How is it helping you? Why are you a coach? What do you love about it? Those are all things that you can post about. Okay. Um, and then just along with posting, like any, um, any, um, what am I trying to say? Any income success that you have, even if it's as small as paying for, um, a pack of diapers, if, um, you are able to pay the electricity bill, um, anything like that, or challenge your success that you're seeing in your challenge groups, um, you know, personal development growth in yourself, things like that, that you share about coaching. Um, it helps people see the growth in you. It helps people be curious. And if you're consistently sharing that stuff, then that's going to be very beneficial. Okay. Ashley, do you want to share what you had? Sure. Um, I wish I would have tallied this because if you guys heard how many times Breezy said consistency, that is literally the key. Like there are good months, there's bad months, but if you are consistent, those bad months make amazing months to follow. And so, um, I will say that and it just, you know, mimic what she said, like I'm very consistent in making sure I have a what is coaching group or some of you guys do the coach webinar. Like I know that's what Brittany does and that works for her. So it's just being super, super consistent with that. Um, since I started doing the what is coaching webinars um, slash groups, my, my recruiting most months have been going this direction. I mean like last month was a low one, but the month before that it was like seven coaches, like, you know, and a couple of my husband's like, you know, so it really is just being consistent. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to say is, you know, I, most of you guys know, most of my networking is done through free groups because it's a way for me to add my heart into the business and people see that that that's what's there for them. In fact, I had a coach today or a discount coach sign up today. And that's what she said. She's like, you know, someone else had posted one of her friends that she knew posted about Shakeology. And because I had been so consistent about posting, she messaged me and said, you know, what, what is this? And you know, here she, she, she signed up as a discount coach today. And it really is just being consistent in those behaviors. And um, when it comes like my little tips for top recruiting and, you know, being, you know, consistent with recruiting is um 
always, always offer the discount to them originally because they're going to stay on longer. If you got a deal on something, you're more likely to stay on it. And, um, and so that's when they always offer that up front. Um, that's why I do 60 day groups because it's the easiest thing to say, do you want a second bag to get you through the full 60 days? So when they say yes, you offer them that discount right then and there. Like it's just an easy outlet to be able to offer that discount to them. So that is one of the ways I recruit. And then obviously most of my coaches have come from doing a challenge group. They got results and they love what they're doing. And, um, there, there's that. And then as far as it goes for getting coaches who are, um, strong and starting off right and everything like that, my biggest tip is in my free groups, and I forgot to mention this, I was on a call last week or two weeks on um, a free group that we were doing, and I forgot to mention this um, during it, and so I'm glad I had this opportunity to, to tell you guys, but there are certain behaviors I look for in these free groups to invite them to coaching. I don't want, I'm at, you know, definitely at a point now where I don't want just a warm body. I want someone who wants to be like me, who wants to go with me run with me walk with me whatever it is but they want to be a part of me and so there are certain behaviors or qualities that i look for in these free groups and it wasn't until i actually did a team call or some kind of call that i actually thought about this and actually wrote it down and it it is exactly what i do and um, first of all in the free group i always have them do an intro so in that intro i know who teachers are why do i target teachers because i'm a teacher by nature, everything I do, my, my behaviors, like I said earlier, I have a lesson plan book that I still plan out my day with. That's who I am, and I'm not changing. So another teacher is going to be totally relatable to that, those behaviors and those quirks that we have as teachers. So when they introduce themselves, I am very upfront in my free groups of who I am. I tell them I was a teacher. I tell them in my intro that part of my journey is in the infertility and the, you know, stuff like that. So they understand where my story is coming from. So a lot of time with me opening up in those free groups, other girls will say, I've struggled with that as well, or I struggle with my depression as well. So I kind of look at those people because right then I'm finding that niche market, right? And I'm finding, okay, I can narrow it down and not necessarily, you can't always count someone out necessarily because they don't say they're a teacher, you know, from that intro. But there's a couple other things. I, by nature, am a very competitive person. And, and you know, most people know this about me. You can tell me that if I hit Success Club 5 this month, I may earn a toilet paper roll. And I'm going to get that toilet paper roll because that's who I am. You dangle a prize in front of me and there's nothing going to stop me from getting that toilet paper roll. Like, it doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be anything. So... That is part of like who kind of my niche market is looking for those competitiveness people. And that doesn't mean all my coaches are competitive, but that's part of my niche market. So in this free group, I look at people who are starting strong and finishing strong. These are the people that I say, look, they just ran from, you know, um, couch to 5k. These girls started at zero. They were not working out and they overcame obstacle after obstacle after obstacle and they finished this group strong. That is the girl I want on my team. That is the girl I'm going to say, oh my goodness, girl, why are you not coaching? You are inspiring me. Like you got me out the door running most days when I didn't want to go. So that's the girl I'm going to reach out to because that's the girl who's going to fit on my team. Um, I look for those who maybe were super shy at the very beginning and kind of held back, but then all of a sudden started gaining that momentum towards the end, right? Because if they, most of us start off everything kind of timid and I'm in the same way, like you get me in a group setting where I don't know anyone, you're not going to hear a peep out of me. But now that I know people, I'm not that shy person. That's who I am. So I look for those girls who are shy but then all of a sudden take off and they're posting and going crazy. And so um, I look for those people. And then um, I look for those who are just overcoming similar obstacles that I've had to overcome in my life or are currently, over, you know, doing in my life right now. So as I do these free groups consistently, or as I do these paid groups consistently, I am still looking for my niche market inside those free 
and paid groups. And those are the girls I mess I don't message every single person in my challenge groups about coaching. Um, you know, I don't. And because, you know, I offer them the discount, but I don't necessarily offer them all a building unless they approach me about it. Um, because I want a strong, solid base. So um, that's kind of my take on it. Um, I'm trying to just make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's my words of wisdom is really if you're networking and you're doing things consistently, you know, your, your customers are, you know, the people who are Facebook stocking are coming to know that if I don't do a free group this month, she's going to offer me one next month still. And you're adding that value to them and you're finding your coaches through those outlets. So. Thank you. Perfect. Hey. From a to the mouth of a top recruiter. I hope we took notes. Okay, so um, the last little thing I want to talk to you guys about, the last, the number three here, is be positive, be passionate, and be consistent. And I told you guys I love Jim Rohn, and I really do love Jim Rohn. I got three more Jim Rohn quotes on here. So um, be positive. Um, how's your mindset? Are you, do you see yourself? as a leader, I love this quote from Jim Rohn. He says, if you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. And that's so simple, but so profound. If you don't feel like a leader, change it. If you don't feel like you're able to recruit these people, change it. Um, see, it's like that. It's the fake it till you make it mentality. You need to present yourself as a put together, positive, passionate coach and that's how you're going to attract people. When you run your free groups, show up for your people, um, share knowledge with them, be there for them, and be excited about it. And that's, that is that positive attitude, um, putting that positive energy out there, that's going to pay you back so big. Um, and you guys, everybody, I love this. I think it was Raina Odell that said this, but she said, Everybody is afraid to invite. Everybody is scared about what people think of them. Um, but what is the worst that's going to happen? It doesn't matter. Um, I love the Jen Sincero quote. If you haven't read You're a Badass, um, Jen Sincero is the author of that book. And she says um, she made her life motto, what could I get away with? And I always think about that when I'm feeling nervous and vulnerable and fearful of inviting or putting myself out there. Um, what, what can I get away with? You know, like, I think that there's so much that so much potential that we have, but we let this negative attitude weigh, weigh us down our negative perception of ourselves. So be positive. Um, who cares if you, someone has a negative response to something that you, um, that you say, that's okay. They weren't meant to be on your team. You're going to find more people. It's okay. So just be positive. Um, and then be passionate. Are you excited about coaching or are you coming across as a cookie cutter beach body coach? I use that term cookie cutter beach body coach a lot because I don't want you guys, I don't want to be the team that has people posting their links and stock images. That's not passion, you guys. That's salesy. I want you guys to be passionate about this. And that's where, you know, developing your story and, sh and doing those questions I shared with you. What has Beachbody done for you? That's what sharing those things, that's what passion is. When you share your passion and are passionate about this, that's genuine. That comes across as genuine to people and people are attracted to that. They want to be a part of that. Um, so ask yourself if you're really passionate if you're showing your passion or if you're being a cookie cutter beach body coach and it's okay I've been a cookie cutter beach body coach I've been there I think we all have and I encourage you to go through those questions I shared and find your passion find out who you are and what you want to share with people how you want to help people and start sharing that that's when your passion is going to come through um and then of course oh this um be passionate Jim Rohn quote if you really want something you'll find a way if not you'll find an excuse Plain and simple, when you get into this business, I see people's fires get lit and they just go for it. Um, 
I remember as soon as Ashley read Failing Forward, it was like I couldn't stop her. Like I recommended that book to her and it was like, holy crap, like she took off. Um, like I just, I've seen that in my coaches and when they take off, it's amazing. So passion, um, find that passion and that will carry you. And then obviously being consistent. Um, I love this quote. We must all suffer one of two things, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. I will tell you, I have struggled with consistency um, when it comes to a lot of different things. I do show up every day. That's where I'm consistent. I push forward and I make sure that I make things happen. And that's why I'm successful. But if you guys can hone in on the things that I shared with you, hone in on your free groups, hone in on your um, coach opportunity, your daily posting. If you can be consistent in those things, you are going to see a tremendous amount of success. And that is, like I said, these are tips from top coaches, you guys. This isn't just your average top 200 breezy bitter coach telling you these things these are top 10 coaches so you know like just you know realize that it's it's sometimes it's it feels hard to be consistent and it feels hard to show up and do these things but really what's hard in my mind is looking back and saying i could have easily done that and i chose not to do it and this sucks because now i don't have a team I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't do what I could have done, easily could have done. Um, and that's that pain of regret that Jim Rohn's talking about. So, um, be positive, be passionate, be consistent. Anyone can do this. You can do this. Um, it's just that mind shift of, of yes, what recruiting is and then taking action on it. So, um, the secret sauce, you guys, the secret sauce, everyone always wants to know, okay, like you've given us all this stuff, but what's the secret? Like, what is it that really makes it happen? How do you really grow your team? It's you. Like, it's you guys. Well, you can, Ashley said this on our Diamond Dash call earlier, and this, she took the words right out of my mouth. We can give you all the tools all the resources in the world. We can tell you all of our best practices, our secrets, but what it comes down to is the action steps that you guys take, um, you know, showing up every day, making it, making it happen, even though you got kids in the background, even though you got to take kids to soccer practice, even though you got a grumpy husband, like you got to make it work. You just, that's, that's what it is. You just have to do it. And there's no other way around it. Um, the secret sauce is you. And what propels you and keeps you going as a coach is the three vital behaviors and upping your personal development. If you want to grow your, grow your team, you have to grow yourself. If you get anything from this, please take this away from it. If you want to grow your team, you have to grow yourself. And um, I just sharing a few personal development tips here, our books, recommendations. If you struggle with consistency, go back to the compound effect. Hopefully that was the first book you read as a coach um, or the, the slight edge, another great one that's the same principles. If you struggle with posting on social media, jab, jab, right hook is a great one, great tips, um, great way to help you set up your social media. Um, if you struggle with take care, taking care of yourself first and time management, this is something I've struggled with. This book has helped me immensely. Um, it also helps you get in the right mindset for the day and be able to reach your goals. It's called Miracle Morning. Um, if you struggle with this positivity and this passion that I'm talking about and getting others excited and passionate, The Energy Bus is a great read. And these are all fairly quick reads. Um, if you get them on Audible, I think their compound effect might be a little bit longer, but I know like Miracle Morning and Energy Bus are like anywhere from like, like three, four hours maybe. So super quick reads. Um, if you apply the principles, they will help you grow yourself so that you can do these action steps to grow your team. You can be that leader. You can show up. You can be that coach. Um, that you want to be. So anyway, um, that is all that I have for you guys tonight. Let me just get out of this here if I can. I'm happy to answer any questions. I know it's a little late, but if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them.
Can I just uh, add one thing real fast? Yes. Because I'm going to tell you exactly what I'd be thinking right now when I first started. And I will be 100% honest. You all know how much um, I didn't believe in myself. And Brizzy knows this. I text her many times that I will never make this work because I can't leave. And, um, and I know that a lot of you were probably thinking the same exact thing, especially you new coaches, newer, or maybe you've been at it for a little bit and haven't gone or moved as fast as you wanted to. Um, I was in those shoes and it wasn't until I literally, like Brizzy said, I read failing forward and I started diving into personal development that everything changed. And as a new coach, I'd be sitting here thinking, this is easy for Breezy. This is easy because she's an elite coach. This is easy. And you guys, she started off with zero coaches. I started off with zero coaches. And um, we all start off with zero coaches. Just because you're elite, premier, top 10, doesn't mean it becomes, it comes easy. Guys, top 10 coaches change all the time because it's hard. And people step up to the plate and they work and they move those feet towards their goals, no matter how many times they fail. So I want you guys to like realize that too, that they started off with zero coaches. Um, just like all of us, like to think that, I mean, I'm not at 50 coaches like Breezy, but you know, I'm over halfway there, you know? And so to say like two years ago, I was at zero coaches and now I have builders doing this who are following and they have builders. Like, I never thought, and so don't sit here and think after listening to this amazing call that it's easy for Breezy or it's easy for me or it's easy for Brittany or Alma or anyone here on this call. It's not. It takes work, but it takes that passion that she was talking about. And once you have that passion, like I just don't want you guys to sit here and think that that it's different because you have zero coaches and you're starting from square one. Cause remember we started from square one. We didn't believe in ourselves either. We didn't know if we could do this. Um, we had doubts and fears and frustrations. We still two, three years in the business. You know, if you could have been on our conversation just the other night talking about like how we're failing and you guys look at us and seeing, you know, you guys look at us and think success. But we look at ourselves and say, where can I improve? And that's the difference between a top coach and someone who says, this is hard. I'm not going to do it. It's not for me. So I was, as I was sitting here, that's my two cents for the night. But I know exactly that would have been two, you know, almost two and a half years ago. If I was on this call, I'd be sitting there thinking those thoughts. So I just wanted to pass that on. Thank you. And, um, I have some questions, but I can just post them elsewhere anyway I, I mean i can close the call if you want okay either way well i just wanted everyone to know that um just for upcoming calls i'll be on the call next week and then Brittany boyer will be on the 19th and then we have a guest speaker on the 26th just to plan out for the next few weeks so that yeah. is all okay um that's it if you guys have any questions, um, I think we should close the call. It's getting late. Um, but if you guys have any questions about recruiting, about best practices, about any of the groups I mentioned or any of the books or anything at all, please just um, feel free to post in the tribe and we can start a thread there. We can chat about it. So thank you guys for getting on.